Hey, check this out. I found this conveniently placed button and it conveniently says click me. Okay. So it looks like every time that I click on it, I get a new saying. But how does this work? Uh oh, I think I made him mad. Let's go. So this button uses what's called an event listener, and an event listener is used to interact programmatically with users and make your web page a lot more dynamic by listening for these user events. Well, hang on a second, what is a user event? Well, a user event is any event that a user can do. So you can click on something, you can scroll, you can double click, uh, just about anything that a user can do is considered a user event. And we can apply these event listeners to just about anything we want inside of our application to make our website a lot more dynamic. And then at the end of this video, we're going to create a completely dynamic side drawer menu. So stick around for that. In the meantime, let's learn how we can use event listeners in JavaScript. So there are three main parts to JavaScript event listeners. The first part being the element that you're going to add the event listener to. And this can be just about any HTML element that you want. The second part being the event itself. So a click or a scroll or whatever you want the event to fire on, whatever the user does, that's going to be your event. And then the third part is going to be the function or the method that you want to call whenever this event is fired. So let's go ahead and get started and we're going to just first grab the element that we want to add this event listener to which is going to be this button here so the first thing we need to do is we need to grab that button by saying const button is equal to document dot query selector and this is the only button inside of this HTML page so I'm just gonna go ahead and select button the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a function for whenever this event is fired this function is going to run and if you don't know what a function is or how a function works you can check out the video I already made linked up in the cards otherwise let's go ahead and write this function we're gonna say function and then we can name it whatever we want I'm just going to name it button clicked and follow that up by parentheses and open and closing brackets. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to write our function. So the only thing I'm really going to do at the moment is I am just going to alert that the button has been clicked. Button was clicked. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to add the event listener itself. And we can do that by selecting the button. And then we could say, dot add event listener just like this now this event listener takes in technically three separate things but only the first two are required and we're just going to focus on the first two things the first thing that it takes in is the event itself so it could be a click it could be a scroll a focus whatever the thing that we're going to do here is we're going to do a click and you see i got a uh, menu of all of the different things that we can do inside of this event listener and the list is massive. We can actually do all kinds of different things with these event listeners. But for now, let's just go ahead and focus on the click. And then we're going to separate that by a comma and this is where our function is going to go. Now, whenever you are passing any function to an event listener, you don't actually want to call it. So we are just going to say button clicked and we are not, I repeat, we are not going to add the open and closing parentheses at the end of this simply because that would call the function. We don't want to call this function until the button is clicked. So we are just going to pass in a pointer to this function and then whenever this button is clicked, then that function is going to be called. So let's go ahead and see this in action. So if I go ahead and save, and then I click on the button, you're going to see that I got an alert saying the button was clicked. And if I dismiss the alert, I can actually continue to click this button as long as this alert is not active, of course. But this is not the only way that we can write an event listener function. We can also write a callback function directly inside of the event listener. So let's go ahead and get rid 
rid of this and let's go ahead and comment this out. Now let's say we don't want to write an independent function for this event listener. We just want to write it inside of the event listener itself. So we can do that using a callback function and that looks like this. And it works just like a regular function and it's going to work exactly the same. This is just a lot more cleaner than this is. So we can use it this way, but we can also use it the other way as well. But let's go ahead and write this here. We can write this exactly the way that we wrote this. So I'm just actually going to go ahead and copy this line here and if I save that nothing is going to show up on the screen but when we click we can still see that we are getting that event listener that is firing and that function is being called whenever that event listener is fired so let's steer away from click listeners for just a bit but don't worry we will come back to them and let's take a look at another type of listener so let's go ahead and just comment this out this out and then we're going to go over here and I'm going to comment out the button and I'm going to uncomment this input. Now, have you ever been to a website where you click on an input field and it changes the background color or it changes the border color of that input to show that you've given it some type of focus? Well, we can actually achieve the same thing using event listeners. So let's go ahead and first select that input field. So we're gonna say const input is equal to document dot query selector and we're just going to pass in the input now we need to write a function for this event listener and my goal for this function is i just want it to change the background color whenever we click on it so let's just say function and then i'm going to say input focused and then we are going to write our function here and we're just going to write an inline quick and dirty style change. So we're going to say input dot style dot background and we're going to set that equal to red. Now, whenever we click on this, whenever we give this focus, it's going to change the background color to red. Now, let's go ahead and add our event listener. So we're going to say input dot add event listener and the event listener that we want to add this time is going to be a focus now whenever we focus it or we click inside of the field and give it focus it's going to run this event listener and then we're just going to point to the input focus to function now if we save that we should get a red background color whenever we click inside of it but we got a slight problem here because it stays red every time we click out of it as well so how do we get rid of the red color to show that we've not focused it well we could do that with another event listener so we could say function input blur and blur because blur is the type of event that we're going to be using whenever we create this event listener and we're just going to do the exact opposite of what we did up here so we could say input dot style dot background and we can set that equal to white that way we can see that it has completely changed whenever we click outside of the field so now we're going to say input dot add event listener and we're going to say blur and then we're going to point to the input blur function here now if we save that you're going to see of course it changes back to white because we refresh the page now whenever we click inside of it it's going to change to that red color to show that it's given focus and then whenever we click outside of it and it's no longer receiving focus we are going to get the background changed back to white now let's go ahead and piece everything all together inside of a single form and this is actually a very common problem process whenever you're developing web applications you want to create a form that is intuitive and interactive that way the user can just follow along enter their information and be done with the form so let's go ahead and add our blur and focus event listeners so we'll just say name input dot add event listener and we're going to add the focus event listener and we are going to call a function we haven't created it yet but we'll go ahead and add the function in here we'll say focus input and then we're going to do the same thing for the blur so we'll say name input dot add event listener blur and then we will add the input blur we will add these functions here in just a moment let's go ahead and do the same for the phone input 
So we'll say this and this. So we'll change this to phone input and we'll change this to phone input. And we're going to be using the same functions for both of them. So we need to make sure those functions are reusable and we can use those functions for both of them. So to create these functions and make them reusable, it's pretty straightforward. The only caveat is that the focus function, it needs to know which field is being focused and we can do that pretty easily. But let's go ahead and add the blur function first and then we will work on the focus function. So we'll first say function input blur. And the only thing that we're going to do is we're gonna take the name input dot style dot background and so we're going to set that equal to white. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the phone input. And that's it. That's our input blur function. Now let's go ahead and start on our focus function. So to create our focus function, we're just going to say function. And we're going to say focus input. And the first thing that we need to do inside of this function is we actually need to call the input blur function. So we're going to go ahead and call the input blur function and we're going to call it. And the reason that we want to do this is so that we make sure that all of the fields inside of the form are completely blank. They don't have any focus styles whatsoever before we add focus to a specific one. So if you tab from one field to another, that way it removes the focus from all of them before we actually add focus to another specific specific one. Now to actually know which field that we need to focus, we actually need to work with the event object. And what the event object is, is an object that is automatically passed in by JavaScript to any event function that is fired. So whenever this event here is fired, this focus event, this focus input is going to be called and JavaScript is automatically going to pass it this event object. We just need to receive it as a parameter. So we can say event or we can name this whatever we want we can name an e event whatever it really does not matter we just need to work with it now so let's go ahead and actually just log this out to the console so we can actually see it because this is actually a beefy event so let's go ahead and inspect over here and if i give this field focus we are going to get this focus event because this field was fired and we logged out this event here so let's take a look at this here and the thing that we're really focused on here is the target. Now the event target is the target that was clicked on or whatever, the element that was targeted specifically whenever the event was fired. So this you can see is this input here, we focused it so this is the specific target. Now we need to look for the name field and I gave these all name fields and we can use this name field from this event object. So we can look to see if this name is name or if it is phone because I gave these fields name of name and name of phone over here in the HTML. So we need to check to see if event.target.name is equal to name. So we're just checking to see over here if this field name here is equal to name or if it's equal to phone. So that way we know which field we're actually focusing. Now, if it is equal to name, we want to say name input dot style dot background. And we're gonna set that equal to, let's say hex code CCC. Now we also want to check to see if it is equal to phone. So we can say event dot target dot name is equal to phone. And if it is equal to phone, we just wanna do the exact same thing that we did here just for the phone input. So if I save this here, we should now actually get a working focus field. And if I click on each one of these and give them focus, it looks like it's working perfectly fine. We are getting that shaded background color to show that we have given some type of focus to each one of these fields. Now let's actually go back and let's take a closer look at that event object because I kind of just skimmed over it a bit. So let's just go ahead and console.log this event 
object. And if I save that and then we inspect and then I give this field focus, I should get that event object. Now there's all kinds of information in here, including how the event was fired, when the event was fired, where the event was fired, all kinds of information about the event. And then it has all kinds of information inside of this target about the target element. It has information about the value that is inside of it, which is blank because we don't have anything in the field at the moment. Then it has like classes and all kinds of information about the field itself. And you can just scroll through here and see all of the different values that you have inside of here. And we can actually click on those three little dots and we can see more inside of here. And this is the event object and this is used all the time in JavaScript. So it's very helpful to get used to this event object. Now there's actually one more event that we can add here and this is going to be an event on the form itself. So let's go ahead and add the form dot add event listener and the event that we are going to be listening for is going to be the submit event. So we could say submit and then we can add our function. We could say form submitted and let's go ahead and add this function here. So we could say function form submitted. And the first thing we actually want to do in many cases, we want to prevent that form from actually submitting. And that may seem a little counterintuitive, but a lot of times you want to transform that data or validate that data before you send it off to a server somewhere or whatever you're doing with this form. So to do this, we need to take in the event object and then we are going to call event dot prevent default. And this is a method that is going to prevent the form from actually submitting. So if you didn't know, whenever you submit an HTML form, it's automatically going to try to send it to the action that you've specified. So if we see over here on this form, we have an action and this is just the local action. This is how you prevent it from actually sending anything anywhere. We can actually prevent this completely in JavaScript just by calling the event.preventDefault. And we can actually transform this data or validate this data. So let's go ahead and try to validate this data. So the first thing we want to do is we want to validate each field independently to make sure that each field is validated properly. And we're just going to check to see if there's a value in there. So we're going to say if, and then we're going to check to see if name input dot value dot length we're going to check to see if we do not have a length and if we do not have a length, then we are going to append something to the page. So we're going to say form dot append and we'll just append form is not valid. And we're going to do basically the exact same thing for the phone input. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to say phone input. Now, if I save this and I try to submit the form with a incomplete phone, we can see that form is not valid. And if I try to submit it with both of them empty, we're actually going to get form is not valid twice. Now to prevent that from happening, from getting it twice, we're actually just going to return here after each one of these appending. So if we get to one, then we know that the form is not valid and we're just going to return from there. So that way we don't get the other one checking as well. So if we save that now and we try to submit a completely blank form, we just get form is not valid a single time. Now this is just some basic form validation. It's not something that you would want on like a production website or anything like that. You would want to make sure that these forms are accurately validated, make sure that the name field is a little bit longer. Make sure that the phone is not too long and not too short. It's the right length for an actual phone number. So here is my challenge to you. I challenge you to validate these fields, the name field and the phone field. Make sure that the name field is at least three characters long and make sure the phone field is exactly 10 characters long, the same length as a regular US phone number. And I want you to drop all of your code down in the comments down below so I can check it out. I'm looking forward to seeing it all. Now let's take a look to see how we can actually see if an HTML element has an event listener added to it. And we can actually do this through the dev tools. So let's go ahead and inspect. And then if we click on this form here and then we go down to event listeners, we can actually see that this event listener is on this form. But if I click on the body, it doesn't have any event listeners. So 
we can see that all of the event listeners that are on any specific element right here inside of the event listeners tab inside of the dev tools and this is actually a very helpful tool if you have a lot of different event listeners and you're trying to manage all of your different events now we can actually remove event listeners from elements as well and it's actually pretty straightforward to do so so let's say we want to remove this event listener from this form here so we could just say form dot remove event listener and it wants the exact same thing that the add event listener wanted so it wants the type of event that we're listening for so the submit event and it wants the function that we are calling whenever this event is fired so we could say form submitted and if we save that we can see now on the form that it has been completely removed. And to see this a little bit more clearly, let's actually move this inside. So it's actually removed whenever the form is submitted. And we're actually going to just go ahead and comment this out because I don't care about that. So let's actually submit the form. So if we look at the inspector menu, we have the form submission here. Now, if we submit this form, now, if we refresh here, now you can see that the submit handler has been completely removed. Now, there's actually another way that we can add event listeners to elements in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and just use this form here and we'll comment out the old one. And we could say form dot on submit. And these on events, they're almost exactly the same as the add event listeners, but they're just a little less versatile. So we could go ahead and say on submit and we can set that equal to the function that we want called whenever this event is fired. So we could say uh, form submitted. And this works exactly as the event listener here. So if we inspect over here and let's actually add something here to show some feedback, we'll say console.log and let's we'll say form was submitted and if we save that now we should see form is submitted inside of the console whenever we submit this form and you can see that we are getting that value logged out to the console now is the time everyone has been waiting for let's create this side drawer menu using everything that we've learned today so let's just go ahead and we're just going to delete basically everything so we're just going to delete all of this and we're going to delete everything in the JavaScript file. And we're actually going to create a new file, a app.css file, because we're gonna add a little bit of styling to this as well. Now let's go ahead and create the HTML for this. So we're going to create a button, and this button is going to say open drawer. And then we need a div for the drawer, and this is going to have a class of drawer outer. And then inside of that, we're going to have another div that has a class of header. And then inside of that, we're going to have one more div that has the class of close button. And then outside of the header, but still inside of the drawer, we're going to add just a few links. So we'll add an A tag that goes nowhere. And we're going to say link to nothing and we're going to duplicate a few times now we got this oddly looking whatever this is now let's go ahead and focus on the css so in the css we're first going to say star and then we're going to say star before and we're going to say star after and then we are going to say box sizing is going to be border box we're going to say margin of zero and padding of zero. Now we're going to style the button. We're going to say button. We're going to say background color of white. We're going to say border solid one pixel black. And then we're going to have a little bit of padding in there as well. So let's just give it five pixels of padding. Then we're going to add the cursor pointer to the button whenever it's hovered. So we're going to say button colon hover and then we're going to say cursor pointer if we save that uh nothing's working because i did not add the link so let's add the link to the css we're going to say app.css now we should get that style button with the cursor of pointer now let's focus on the drawer so let's say 
drawer outer and we'll give this a position of fixed then we'll give it a left of zero we'll give it a top of zero we'll give it a height of a hundred view height not 10 I said a hundred then we'll give it a width of 30 view width then we'll set the background color to black and we'll set the display to flex and this is going to allow us to add the flex direction whoops not flex wrap flex direction to column that way everything stacks then let's work on some of the links so we're going to add the a the a hover the a visited and the a active that way they all they all have the same styles and we're just going to set the color to white and if we save that we get something that somewhat resembles a menu I guess now let's work on the button that's going to close this so the first thing we need to do is we need to grab that header class and we want to set the display to flex and we want to justify that content to the flex end. This is going to add the button to the right hand side so that way we can close it on the right hand side. Now we need to configure that button. So we're going to say close button and we're going to set a width of 40 pixels, a height of 40 pixels, and then we're going to give it a position of relative. And this is going to be the outlining box for the button itself. Now we're going to add the actual X for the button inside of it. So we're going to say close button before and we're going to say close button after. Now we need to give this a few classes here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it some content of just an empty string. Then we need to give it a position of absolute. We need to give it a width of 36 pixels, a height of four pixels, a background color of white, a border radius of two pixels, and we're going to give it a top of 16 pixels. And this is going to just offset it from the top a little bit. Now we need to actually transform the X. So we're going to say close button before we're going to say WebKit transform. And this is going to work for Chrome. So we're going to transform. We're going to rotate it 45 degrees. Now, if you're on Firefox, you want to use the Moz transform. And we're going to do the exact same thing. This is just so it works on Chrome and Firefox. So we'll say 45 degrees. And then we need to add a regular transform of rotate 45 degrees. This is so it works everywhere else. And we're actually going to give this a left of two pixels just so it sits properly. Now we need to add the other side. So we're going to say dot close button after, and then we're basically going to do the exact same thing only in reverse. So we're going to say negative 45 degrees for all of these. And instead of the left, we're going to do the right. Now we just need to add the hover. So we're going to say close button hover and we're going to say cursor pointer and then we're actually going to add a last class a is hidden class so this way this is the class that's going to be toggled whenever we open and close the side drawer so let's say dot is hidden and we're going to say this is display of none and that is the CSS and you can see this has shown up. This is the X that we were working on over here. This right here added all the styles for both of the lines. Then this right here transformed one of the lines and this transformed the other line. And then we just added a hover and we'll add this class. This will be our hide and unhide class. 
So now let's go ahead and focus on some of the JavaScript and the JavaScript is actually the easy part here. Now for the JavaScript, we just need a few things. We're going to say const open button is equal to document dot query selector. And I'm just going to select that button. Then we need the close button. So we're going to say const close button and we're going to set that equal to document dot query selector. And we're going to select that close button. And then we actually need to select the drawer itself as well. We're going to say drawer is equal to document dot query selector. And we're going to select that drawer outer. Then we actually need to create the function to toggle it. So we're going to say function toggle drawer. And then we're going to say drawer dot class list dot toggle. And we're going to toggle that is hidden class. And finally, we need to actually add the event listener. So we're going to say open open button dot add event listener. We're going to listen for the click. And then we're going to call the toggle drawer function. And then we're basically going to do the exact same thing for the close button. And that is the JavaScript. Now, if we just go over here and add the is hidden class to this drawer, it's going to disappear. Now we should be able to toggle this thing open and close just like that. And that is a basic side drawer. And that is about it for JavaScript event listeners. Now I know we did a lot of different stuff in this video. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section down below. I'll answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, if you did like the video, make sure you slap a like on it. Check out the full playlist link is right next to me. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next one.